How's it going everyone? So today I would like to recap the major news and milestones from quantum computing from October of 2025. I've been doing this for a few months now and there's so much news and information flying around all the time in the quantum computing space that I like to just bring it all together into one quick video. So let's get into the October 2025 recap for quantum computing news. And of course, just a disclaimer at the start of this, I'm not going to catch every single story. I just kind of hand selected some of the ones that I think are worth talking about or I think are particularly impactful. Before we jump in, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button. And if you're so inclined, you can also subscribe to get content like this. So starting in early October, the Nobel Physics Prize was awarded to the trio hailed for work in quantum mechanics. Basically, the trio who all carried out their research at American universities were honored for the discovery of macroscopic quantum mechanical tunneling and energy quantization in an electric circuit. So very nice to see the Nobel Prize awarded in the area of quantum. We saw earlier this month also that Seal SQ and Trusted Semiconductor Solutions partnered to develop made in US post quantum secure solutions for US government and defense agencies. They announced a strategic partnership to co develop made in US post quantum cryptography enabled secure semiconductor solutions, reaching the highest levels of hardware certification tailored for US defense and government agencies. And of course, the importance of this for CLSQ is they're entering into the US market, not only with NIST standards, which are rigid standards for semiconductors, but they're also working with a trusted name in the US. It's literally in the name, Trusted Semiconductor Solutions. So very nice to see for them. And then I found this headline, which I thought was interesting. IBM and Vanguard test quantum approach to building portfolios. And this was from earlier in the month. So IBM and Vanguard researchers demonstrated a quantum classical workflow for portfolio construction using 109 qubits on IBM's Heron processors, showing potential advantages for large scale financial optimizations. While current hardware limits prevent tackling thousand asset portfolios where quantum advantage would emerge, the study establishes feasibility and identifies complex noise tolerant circuits as promising for future financial applications. This is an area that interests me how this will be used by the big brokerages, Charles Schwab, Vanguard, Fidelities, how they'll use quantum computing for financial modeling and portfolio management. And I did notice in October, it, we did have a slow start to the month. So now we're getting kind of more into the middle of the month, like the 10th through the 20th. And we saw from D-Wave, they announced their participation as a founder of the Q Alliance defined in an MOU, and they called it the birth of the world's most powerful quantum hub. Initiative empowers Lombardi with new global infrastructure that leverages D-Wave's leadership in quantum computing to support Italy's digital transformation future. The Q Alliance aims to accelerate scientific discovery, industrial transformation, and digital sovereignty. We also saw early in the month, and as you can see, we're kind of we're getting to about the middle of the month, not a ton of impactful news, but as we get later in the month, you'll see things have started to accelerate. So INQ quantum computing achieved greater accuracy, simulating complex chemical systems to potentially slow climate change. So INQ announced a significant advancement in quantum chemistry simulations, demonstrating the accurate computation of atomic level forces with the quantum classic auxiliary field quantum Mark Monte Carlo algorithm. That is a mouthful. This demonstration in collaboration with a top global 1000 automotive manufacturer proved more accurate than those derived using classical methods. So this could be a very interesting use case for quantum computing as well is how we can potentially model climate and have better, more accurate forecasts. And also like we've had a lot of catastrophic weather events, even in the last couple of years that I can remember. And if people have more time to prepare for that, or if we're more able to accurately model that with something like quantum computing, that could be a life-saving uh, technology there. So we also saw that JP Morgan Chase invested 1.5 trillion, I believe this was over 10 years, 
and their investments included Quantum. So yes, this was a 10 year, $1.5 trillion plan to finance and invest in industries vital to US economic and national security. The firm will make up to 10 billion in direct equity and venture capital investment to support companies in the supply chain, defense, energy, and frontier technologies such as AI, cybersecurity, and quantum computing. This is a really interesting article and definitely something that everyone should keep at the back of their mind. It has become painfully clear that the United States has allowed itself to become too reliant on unreliable sources of critical minerals, products, and manufacturings, all of which are essential for our national security said Jamie Dimon, chairman and CEO of J.P. Morgan Chase. Our security is predicated on the strength and resilience of America's economy. America needs more speed and investment. It also needs to remove obstacles that stand in the way, excessive regulation, bureaucratic delay, partisan gridlock, and an education system not aligned to the skills we need. So just to piggyback on this and to interject a little bit, kind of think of the, the small ship how it can navigate the water and it can turn and move very quickly and dexterously through complex environments. When you get a big, big ship, it's very hard to turn it. And, and that's, I believe what, what Jamie Dimon here is alluding to that with the bureaucracy and all of the infighting and, and that type of thing, the, the technology priorities and even those supply chains that are critical to national security, they get put on the back burner because that ship is so hard to move. So very nice to see some kind of um, activism there from uh, JP Morgan Chase. So IonQ, we also saw that IonQ completed the acquisition of Vector Atomic. So IonQ has completed an all stock acquisition of Vector Atomic, California based sensing company. And quantum sensing, we saw at the Quantum Plus AI New York how quantum sensing is being used by the Mayo Clinic to save patients' lives. So quantum sensing is a big deal. The deal brings over 75 employees and 29 patents from Vector Atomic, whose sensing systems offer picosecond timing accuracy. Vector Atomic's government proven sensing portfolio includes technologies supporting the US DOD and will be integrated into IonQ's quantum computing and networking offering, strengthening its defense and space market presence. And this is what the appeal of IonQ is. They're working on the quantum networking. They're building the quantum computers. They had the massive acquisition of Oxford Ionics. And now they also have this very important acquisition on the sensing front. They're looking to be a one-stop shop for everything quantum. This is the early days for IonQ. And this is very impressive acquisition and very impressive news. So now we're getting into the later part of the month, basically the 20th through Halloween. And this is where things started to pick up pace and get more exciting. So buckle in and let's kind of go over those last few days. So BTQ announced the first successful demonstration of a quantum resistant Bitcoin implementation using NIST standard post quantum cryptography. I don't personally invest in Bitcoin, but the millions of people that do have a vested, literally an, a vested interest in making sure that those Bitcoins are protected from a quantum attack. So BTQ is working on that important work. And this proof of concept is obviously a step in that direct market. $2.4 trillion Bitcoin market from quantum attacks that are projected to emerge by 2030. CLSQ had another exciting announcement and actually at the Quantum Plus AI conference in New York, I got to see them on stage unveil this QS7001 chip. And this is their quantum resistant, the first secure embed NIST standardized PQC algorithm directly at the hardware level. The chip will officially launch in mid-November. Carlos gave the opening keynote where AI meets quantum, building unbreakable post-quantum security. So what's new about this is it's the Quantum Shield QS7001, which integrates PQC algorithms directly in this silicon, it provides 10x performance games, and it's built as an open hardware platform with support for custom firmware and hybrid cryptography. So that was an exciting announcement. All right, now we're getting to some of the bigger hitters here. So Google had a big announcement. They had a quantum echoes 
algorithm announcement, which is they're claiming as a big step toward real world applications for quantum computing. And this was very exciting and so exciting that we decided to write an article about this. But first I'm over on the blog.google.com and quantum echoes can be useful in learning the structure of systems and nature from molecules to magnets to black holes. And we've demonstrated it runs 13,000 times faster on Willow than the best classical algorithm. And you can kind of go watch this video and learn a little bit more about that. This is a fascinating progress. They have some animations here about how it works. And we decided to do some artwork as well since the quantum echoes and just all of this was a little abstract. So first of all, so if you go over to the quantumbold.com, actually this story made the breakthroughs, which is, I believe, a very coveted spot to be in. We have a, a small spot on the homepage on the quantumbull.com where real, really, really important breakthroughs make it here. So this article made it here. Google Quantum AI achieves verifiable quantum advantage. The last one on there was D-Wave achieving quantum supremacy. I'm super picky about what I put here because I really, I wanted to be moving the whole industry forward in a verifiable way. So we we talk a, lo a lot about the scientific and practical breakthrough. Unlike earlier quantum supremacy claims, this experiment's produced results with genuine scientific value, provided new insights into how quantum information propagates and opens pathways for real world applications in chemistry, material science, and physics. And Chloe did an amazing job on the artwork here where we're kind of demonstrating kind of how the qubit works and the echo. So here is, is an artistic illustration of the, the echo and what the breakthrough involves. So kind of an infographic here. So Google Willow's chip, a quantum system of lattice qubits. So moving forward in time, the qubits become entangled. One qubit is perturbed and the disturbance spreads across devices. In reversing, the entangled qubits create an echo instead of returning perfectly to the initial state. So we're actually taking measurements process at speeds and scales beyond the reach of any classical computer. Even more significantly, the computation's outcome could be cross-checked and verified on other quantum devices. And the echo is a measurable correlation signal measured as an out-of-time correlator that reveals how information was scrambled and recovered. So if you'd like to take a look at that whole article, uh, check it out on the quantumbull.com. And that is under the news section. We we don't write every single article covering every single thing. We have to pick and choose our spots as a very, very small operation. Um, but hope you enjoy that article. Okay, and IonQ achieves a landmark result setting a new world record in quantum computing performance. So this was the 99.99% two qubit gate performance, which marks an inflection point for IonQ's leadership and further accelerates IonQ's leading quantum roadmap. And they already have a very aggressive roadmap, but these, these type of breakthroughs are essentially mandatory for them to have a chance to hit their roadmap. So this postquantum.com article kind of goes into what was achieved. So they achieved record, record accuracy without cooling. It stayed accurate even when the system was hotter. A new way to run the gate model, why it matters, and INQ's storyline. I liked in this article the... Uh, takeaways here. So the four nines is not just a trophy. It changes error correction math. So moving from 99.9 .9 to 99.992 qubit gates isn't a 10x better narrative. It can be a thousand fold reduction in logical error rates once you stack many rounds of error correction. And above Doppler operation is a system's milestone. If you can run high fidelity two qubit gates without slow second stage cooling, you take a sledgehammer to a well-known runtime bottleneck in QCCD trapped ion machines. And there's more to this, but essentially this was a very big article, very weighty and meaty uh, breakthrough for IonQ, exciting for the space. We also saw in late October, IBM says conventional AMD chips can run quantum computing error correction algorithm. So in June, IBM said it had developed an algorithm to run aside quantum chips that can address such errors. And so they wanna use, essentially they wanna use AMD chips in a research paper seen by Reuters to be published on Monday. IBM will show how it can run algorithms in real time on a type of chip called a field programmable gate array manufactured by AMD. Again, that kind of concept of pairing 
the QPU and the GPU and the CPU, not the QPU replacing anything, but a complement too. So how can these different processors take different parts, share memory, and then ultimately give us better results? Compute is a hot commodity. Speaking of computing, NVIDIA introduced NVQ link connecting quantum and GPU computing for 17 quantum builders and nine specific nine scientific labs. So this NVQ link is a high speed interconnect that lets quantum processors connect world leading super com computing labs, including Brookhaven National Laboratory, Fermi Laboratory, and so on. And NVQ link provides quantum researchers with a powerful system for the control algorithms and NVQ link allows researchers to build hybrid quantum classical systems. In the near future, every NVIDIA GPU scientific supercomputer will be hybrid, tightly coupled with quantum processors to expand what is possible with computing, said Jensen Huang, founder and CEO of NVIDIA. NVQ link is the Rosetta Stone connecting quantum and classical supercomputers, uniting them into a single coherent system that marks the onset of the quantum GPU computing era. Huge, huge quote, because we started this year in January of 2025 talking about how Jensen was saying that quantum computing was 15, 20, 30 years away. And now we're seeing that in the very near future, every NVIDIA GPU scientific supercomputer will be hybrid and tightly coupled with quantum processors. So incredible to see the 180 from NVIDIA, from Jensen, and the rapid acceleration of this fill. We also saw from the White House that the U United States signed a technology prosperity deal with Japan and Korea, and both of those had AI quantum computing specifically listed out in the deals. The US-Japan TPD advances joint efforts to secure the in innovation ecosystem with particular focus on research security, resilient biotech, and pharmaceutical supply chains and protection of quantum technologies. The U.S.-Korea TPD advances combined efforts, which includes quantum technologies as well as pharmaceuticals and biotech. In addition to all of this, now we're kind of like rounding out, we're getting close to the end of this recap. We also saw the U.S. was weighing taking equity stakes in quantum computing firms like Rigetti and INQ and Quantum Computing Inc. This was just a rumor and the government denied this, but we have heard very We've had we've heard a lot of rumors about executive orders mandating post quantum cybersecurity, and we've heard now this rumor of direct stakes. So the U.S. government was reportedly in talks with several quantum computing companies, including INQ, Rigetti, and D-Wave, to take equity stakes for at least 10 million in federal funding per firm. As you can see, we started slow in October, but we rapidly accelerated, and we're going into November, and we're going into quantum earnings. And it'll be very interesting to see what these quantum companies are reporting and not only what they're reporting, but what they're guiding for and what they're telling us is on their revenue roadmap and also their technological roadmap. And if you ask Troy Jensen from Cantor Fitzgerald, what he's telling investors and we told everyone at Quantum Plus AI in New York, what is most important is that these quantum companies are hitting their technical milestones. That revenue will come in the coming years, but they need to hit their technical milestones. So what does that look like? Hopefully we see more progress from INQ. Hopefully Rigetti is able to deliver that 100 qubit system by the end of year. And what what we're witnessing in real time is a beautiful tech story that's unfolding and we just get to be a part of it and i'm having a lot of fun covering this space really appreciate you watching if you watch all the way this far then you're just as interested in this space as i am and appreciate you following the channel if you haven't already uh please hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like more content like this and we'll see you in the next one I hope you really enjoyed that content. If you would like to support the YouTube channel and the website, thequantumbowl.com, I have three different membership options. I have the Quantum Bowl, which starts at $4.99 a month, and you get members-only videos and polls. The Golden Bowl, which gets you access to our Discord, where we talk about trades. I share my buys and sells. I provide trade alerts, and we talk about all kinds of different stocks. To join, just click subscribe, the plus button by the subscribe, and you'll get a prompt and you can choose which level is best for you.